Lethal Company, the side-splitting co-op garbage collector game that is running laps around games like COD, despite only having a single developer. My name is Mycopath and I've been having a blast in this game. Bye. Okay T, you got it. No. Oh my god. <laughs> If there's one thing to know about me, if I like something, there's a very good chance I'm going to turn it into a LEGO set, even if I'm not allowed to upload it to LEGO Ideas. And that's why we're here today. Let's waste absolutely no time. Here is The Company Ship. This set comes in at 1528 pieces, including four minifigures, a bracken, an eyeless dog, and of course, the ship. As always, we start with... The first two are exactly the same in terms of details, but I did not spend time animating both of them for nothing. So, here are the orange suit employees. They have solid black heads and wear welder masks in grey. On their backs are a set of pale yellow canisters, which sit on an orange printed torso. The print shows some fabric folds with brown straps across the chest, as well as their employee label and rank. They have solid orange arms with black hands. The first employee has a green flashlight consisting of a lightsaber hilt and a yellow 1x1 circular tile. The second holds a dark green walkie talkie. Their legs are quite simple, just dual molded in orange and black. Next up, the green suit employee. This one, quite frankly, is very similar to the others. Just change what's orange and make it dark green. Slap a big yield sign in its hand and call it a day. What colour suit do you mean? I'm actually really partial to the dark green one. And last of the figures is the yellow suit employee. Once again, extremely similar to the other employees, yellow suit, but instead of the pale yellow canisters, they have the ultimate clip maker, the jetpack. I'm really pleased with the build on this thing. Uh, I think including the paint roller pieces on the handles looks just absolutely lovely. Looks very nice. Next, let's talk about... First up, the Bracken. I made a point to make sure that I didn't make any new moulds and stuff, because I wanted to approach this like Lego might. Lego make compromises, whether that be for budget or creativity. But that said, I'm really pleased with how this came out. I think that much like everybody's favourite neck snapper here, it's very striking. I was at odds with the colour scheme at first, because while the Bracken is red, they are so often encompassed in shadow that a lot of people just don't know that. I tried a darker colour, including black and dark grey, but it just didn't work for me. So here's what we have. They have a printed dark red head with those piercing white eyes. On their back are six of those brand new fern pieces that were introduced in the Rivendell set, this time in dark green. Their torso is made up of a number of snot elements which lead perfectly into their arms and legs. They're very poseable, being able to move their head, shoulders, arms, wrists, waists, and legs, and while it's not an exact recreation of the Bracken, I think it does a good enough job capturing the essence of our flowery fella. Next, we have the eyeless dog. I'm gonna start by saying I've never built an animal or a creature before, so this is not my strong suit, but I've tried my absolute best to capture what is arguably the most infamous enemy in the game. At their front, the huge gaping maw filled with sharp teeth with both the upper and lower jaws being poseable. They also have a poseable neck joint connecting to their body, which has this concave spine that raises back towards the tail. The legs are also very poseable. I don't really have a lot to say when it comes to the details of this because I think that it does speak for itself. But now we can dive into the details of the but wait, Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. You hate plugs and I hate plugging it, but it's in the description. So support me if you want to. If you want more videos like this, like and subscribe too. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Here it is, the company ship. We have a lot to cover. We'll start with the outside. The silver balcony with the yellow railing wraps around the ship and is pretty close to the actual shape in the game. In addition, there are three ladders, one on the front left, one on the back right, and one going up the side of the ship. Below the ship, I had to make some compromises. The engine thrusters are much smaller, and I added some legs so the build can actually stand. Which personally I don't think is a big deal, I think that it looks better this way, just in terms of being a Lego set. 
As for the outside of the ship, I made sure that that would be as accurate as I could, including the raised trapezoid on the top on which the antenna sits, and the angled walls, which were an absolute bitch to figure out. But as you can see, it came out looking really good. Plus, the roof is removable, so we can easily take a look inside. Starting right at the door is a sticker showing the outside camera and the door hydraulics, with the door buttons underneath. On the floor is a hydraulic canister with a wire using multiple whip elements, which slinks across to the opposite side. Next to that is the clothes hanger, which includes a spare suit, allowing for each person to slightly customize their crew and ship if they want. If you don't like the green suit, you can hang that one up and just put the other one in an orange suit. Turn my light on and grab. Let's go. Ah, my stamina. I can't see anything. Where? Yeah, because you just ran away. Maybe. Sorry. Where'd you go? You were like, I'm going to stick with you, and then you just ran away. I'm following your voice. Legitimately, where are you? Further still into the ship is the charging station, complete with the copper coil print. On the slanted wall are two stickers, one of which is a recreation of the ship capacity poster, and the other is a recreation of the poster found on that wall, with a little Lego spin and a shout out to the game's creator, Zekas. Next up is the computer terminal, including a sticker with a list of all the moons. Then we have the main monitors, covered in details. Starting on the rightmost screen, we have the interior door camera view. Above that, a small printed screen shows the interior of the ship as viewed from the monitor. To the left, the quota and deadline screens, also printed. Below is the main monitor, which shows an employee me, inside a facility, dangerously swamped by creatures. Below that is a sloped brick with the dashboard, covered in all the buttons and labels you could wish for. Also on the table is a funny horn. Moving to the left, we have the bunk beds, including the drawers on the bottom, represented by those grey ingot pieces, with a blue boombox on the top. Of course, next to that is the brown and pale yellow filing cabinet, in addition to a spare set of canisters. On the wall next to that is two more posters, including the helpline and a reassuring note that our pilots won't abandon us in treacherous conditions. There is a six-pack crate of beer to contribute to that company quota, and finally, there's the red storage cabinet to keep all your useful items that you definitely won't lose because of your mechanical keyboard and an eyeless dog. Overall, I'm really proud of this project. I think that I captured the ship and its details to a degree of which I will proudly put my name on. And I did. Let's talk about... My last words to the world are, um... <laughs> <laughs> the box of course has all the bells and whistles you'd expect. First is my Micropath version of the LEGO logo, along with the Lethal Company logo. Given the contents of the game and the size of the set, it's labelled as 18+, with the set number 240187, which is the peak concurrent play account of the game. 240,817 people. Wild. In the bottom corner is the Zika's logo, and on the opposite side is the figures. Some inside shots are visible on the back, as well as the bracken on the one side. And as a final little treat for any LEGO 3D animators watching, the entire build, without custom textures, is available to download and use on Mechabricks. So if you want to use this build in your Lethal Company animations, it is all yours. Just don't forget to credit, of course. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, comment, join the Patreon, anything helps. Your time alone helps me make more videos like this. I've been Micropath. See you next time. So it's... <laughs> You've murdered thousands of people. Slay!